Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to The Codex. In this video, we're continuing our project, Handwritten Digit Recognition with Python. And in this video, we're going to be wrapping things up by visualizing the actual images and printing out the predicted results, and then finally making a confusion matrix that will display all of our correct and incorrect predicted labels compared to the actual labels that it was supposed to show. So we'll wrap things up with that, and then we'll be done with this project Let's dive right in. First thing first, I want to quickly show what's happening behind the scenes with every image is passing in and what the predicted values look like. So over here, I'm going to create an index variable, set this initially equal to zero. And what I want to go ahead and do is iterate over kind of the first couple values in the test data set and mshow or plt.mshow the array input array and then print out the predicted value to see what's going on and if we're correct or not. So over here, I'm going to say plt.mshow. And we saw from above when we were printing these out that we have to reshape the image and then map it to a color. So over here, what are we showing? We are, are going to show np.reshape passing in our x uh, test. And then the index of this should be our index over here. And then once we reshape it to a size that we want, in this case, 28 comma 28, we want to go ahead and print out the prediction. Don't worry about color for now. It doesn't really matter. And then here say prediction should be equal to whatever our logistic regression model predicts. So let me quickly show you what that is over here. If I say MDL dot predict, and then I pass in, let's say over here, X test, X underscore test, pass in zero over this way, running that gives us this massive array and we see expected 2D array got 1D array instead. So let's go ahead and specify here, predict an array of these values and we get the answer four. So if we go ahead and print out over here, the zeroth item, we get the actual string, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to type over here, mdl.predict, pass in x underscore test, pass in our index for which we want to predict. And then last but not least, once we've predicted this, we want to get the zeroth item or the actual string value and print that out. So now if I run this, I get a small invalid syntax and that's because I need to wrap my print statement like that. And we see over here, our first value and mistake. We see the image nine, but our algorithm thought it was four. And this kind of makes sense. We had a 92% accuracy and I'm sure our algorithm might've gone confused. So let's go ahead and iterate over the next item. So index equals one. Shift enter to run and we see prediction four. our image is four. awesome. Index two, image is four, prediction is four, great. Three, our image is seven, prediction is seven. So now the question is, okay, this is great. How did we do overall? Where did it screw up? Let's see the entire matrix. And so in um, kind of machine learning or in Python, there's this concept known as the confusion matrix. And the confusion matrix is a tabular summary of the number of correct and incorrect predictions made by a classifier. So back at the very top, you notice that over here, we said from sklearn import metrics. And what we can go ahead and do here is say CM, our confusion matrix is equal to metrics.confusion. And all we have to do is pass in our test Y values and then the predicted by Y values. So here, Y underscore test comma predictions. That's it. And now if I print out CM, I get sklearn.metrics has no attribute confusion. I'm sorry, confusion underscore matrix. Go ahead and enter. And now I get this array. All right. So the next step now is to go ahead and beautify the results of this confusion matrix. I'm sure you're looking at this right now and you have no idea what's going on. You see all these big numbers in the diagonals, and then you have all these smaller numbers in kind of the quadrants. What is actually going on here? Let's visualize this with matplotlib and beautify the results. So let's go ahead and do just that. We're going to specify our figure here to be fig size, uh, a 10 by 10 graph. And once we go ahead and do that, let's go ahead and run the mshow command on our data. So let's go ahead and say mshow cm, and then let's give it a map, color map, and pass in the word pastel. So we'll get some nice pastel looking colors. And last but not least, let's give it a title for now. That is our confusion matrix for MNIST data. So once we have that and we run it, you might get this error color map pastel is not defined. Go ahead and run this. And if that doesn't work, copy paste the pastel value that they gave for some reason. I wasn't able to figure out why this error was happening, but if you copy that pastel, paste that in and run it, you should now see the exact pastel value 
confusion matrix right over here. So we have this pastel kind of graph and it looks interesting. You have no idea what's going on. What we need to go ahead and do now is actually add the numerical values of this array on our matrix and update these ticks to showcase what's actually happening. So first thing first, I'm gonna go ahead and update the ticks. I'm gonna say plt.xticks should be np.arrange 10, plt.yticks should be np.arrange 10. And so what that's gonna go ahead and do is, it's gonna make sure that we have zero through nine as my ticks at the bottom and zero through nine as my ticks on the y-axis. And by doing so, we'll very clearly see the correspondence between 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, etc. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually reduce the graph size so it's a little bit more visual on, you can see a bit better on my screen. And then after that, let's go ahead and give our x and y axes labels. So plt.y label, y label should be here my actual label. And then plt.x label here should be my predicted label, okay? Now that I have that, let's print this out one more time. We have my actual label, my predicted label. This looks good. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is specify right over here the fact that I'm going to be dealing with my labels on the actual blocks over here. So each block here needs its label, the corresponding values over here. And the way we can do this is very simple. We need the width and height of my kind of graph. So cm.shape will give me the width and height of this array, which is honestly is a 10 by 10 matrix. And then once I have that, I'm gonna say for X in range width, for Y in range height, I'm gonna iterate and for every single position, I wanna annotate on my graph. So I'm gonna say plt.annotate. And what am I gonna annotate with? So the actual text here is gonna be a string version of my array value, so cmxy. And then once I have that string value, I'm gonna specify the XY location, the actual location of the annotation to be Y comma X. And so that'll plot the actual text on my graph and then it'll ask for an alignment. So how do you wanna align this? And we're gonna specify my horizontal alignment to be center and my vertical alignment to be center as well. So we're annotating our graph, we're adding in the annotations and now if you run it, we see this beautiful confusion matrix. So what's going on here? We have our predicted labels on the bottom. We have our actual labels on the y-axis. And looking at this data, we can see exactly where our model went wrong. So out of all these zero kind of digits passed in, it correctly predicted 1,317 of them, but then it kind of got confused with fives, it got confused with eights and nines, which is very reasonable. Let's look at a, maybe a larger incorrect label. Four and nine was, nine was mis incorrectly misinterpreted 50 times as four, which makes a lot of sense. So our predicted label here was nine. Our algorithm thought that the four looked like a nine, but in that case, it was actually a four. And this confusion matrix gives us a lot of insight into overall how our algorithm is predicted. Now, if we want to go ahead and showcase the different color ranges or colors and see what's actually going on in terms of like the different ranges or fields of color, last but not least, we can type over here, plt.colorbar. And what color bar will do is it will add this nice looking color bar to showcase where it's going well and where it's not. And so let's say that our confusion matrix was doing poorly for the nine and four case, and it had more than 100, I guess, 80 values, and it was blue, that would immediately catch our attention and showcase that, hey, something's going wrong here. We need to refit or retrain our model and change up the features or labels somehow. So this, Confusion matrix is a great way to get a high level overview of how your predictions compare to your actual labels and where it went wrong. Anyways, thanks so much for listening. In this project, you built an end-to-end -end logistic regression model to predict handwritten digits using the MNIST dataset. I hope you had a blast making this project. It was a lot of fun for me, and I hope to see you on a future project on the Codex platform. Thanks so much for listening, and I will see you in the next video.